Hello students, I welcome you in today's session of physics and in physics you can see here uh, I'm going to present chapter number 19 which is your high wave nature of light hygiene's principle. You can see here this is the chapter. Before going to start the chapter let's uh, have a discuss what we have to study in this chapter. The first one is the wavefront and hygiene principle. Proof of laws of reflection and refraction using hygiene's principle. Clear? <clears throat> so first you can see here we have to discuss what is the nature of light. I'm not uh, not going to the deep uh, very much. You can see here this is a very much uh, theory written here. So I will tell you what you have to study. You have to see the dual nature of light. That is the thing written here. The present standpoint of physicist is to accept that fact that the light is dualistic in nature. Means what is the dualistic in nature? That light behaves like a particle as well as wave. Fine. So the phenomena of light propagation may be best explained by the electromagnetic wave theory while the interaction of the light matter is the process of emission and absorption is a corpuscular phenomena. So first we have to discuss what is the wave front. This is the important one so we will discuss from here. So uh, you can see here if we draw a surface in a medium such that all the medium particles lie on in the surface are in the same phase of oscillation then the surface is called as a wavefront. So in a homogeneous isotropic medium the wavefront of a wave is perpendicular to the direction of the propagation of wave hence the line drawn normal to the wavefront gives the direction of the propagation of the wave and it is called a ray wavefront can be of different shapes. You can see here there are the different types of wavefronts given here. The first one you can see here there is a spherical one. The second one is the uh, planar one and the third one is the cylindrical wavefront. So first we will discuss about the spherical wavefront. So what the spherical wavefront is, if the wave in a medium are originating from a point source then they propagate in all directions, clear? So if we draw a sphere taking the point source as a center then the particles of the medium situated on the surface of the sphere will be oscillating in the same phase. The reason is that the disturbance is starting from the source which will reach all these particles simultaneously. Hence. In this case the wavefront will be spherical and the ray will be of radial lines which you can see from the figure number 1a. I hope you understand it. Now come to the second one. You can see from the above figure the planar wavefront. The plane wavefront. So if a wave is traveling in a medium along a single direction then at an instant clear the particle of the medium situated on the surface drawn perpendicular to this direction will be oscillating in the same phase. Fine. So in this case the wavefront will be plane and the ray will be a straight parallel. You can see from the figure number V. So this is the plane wavefront. Now come to the third one which is the cylindrical wavefront. Now what happened in the cylindrical wavefront when the source is linear or the wave are coming from a line source such as the fine rectangular slit. Fine. So then the wavefronts are cylindrical with the source as you can see from the figure number C. Fine. Now we will discuss the most important topic which is the Huygens wave theory. This is the most important one, Huygens wave theory. So what uh, is the Huygens wave theory? In 1678 Huygens proposed the wave theory of light, fine. Now according to the Huygens light travel in the form of waves, clear? These waves after emerging from the light source travel in the all direction with the velocity of light which is c is equals to 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. I hope you know very well what is the velocity of light. <coughs> Now since the waves requires a material medium to travel, you will also know it very well that waves requires a material medium for the propagation. So Huygens imagines an all pervading medium which is called the luminiferous ether, clear? So it was assumed that this hypothetical medium is weightless and can penetrate through the matter. So it has all the properties necessary for the propagation of light wave, for example light travel with a velocity of how much 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second means that it is the velocity of light. So hence it was assumed that the density of ether is very small and the elasticity is very large. So you can write it wave speed is equals to under root elasticity by density. You can see this relation. This is the relation of wave speed. So light wave travel in such a small and the elasticity is very large. So uh, light travels in such a hypothetical medium when these waves fall upon the retina of the eyes they causes the sensation of sight fine 
so different colors of light are attributed to be due to the waves of different wavelengths now here you can uh, you can see the wave huygens principle so huygens proposed a geometrical construction to explain the propagation of the wavefront in the medium and determine the position of the wavefront after an interval of time so is known as the huygens principle and it can be stated as follow the first one every particles of the medium situated on the wavefront act as a new wave source fine that is the thing written here from which the fresh wave originate these waves are called the secondary wavelets now come to the second one what's the second one is the secondary wavelet travel in a medium in all the direction with the speed of the original wave light of the medium now see the third one the envelope of the secondary wavelet in the forward direction at any instant give the new wavefront at that instant so these are the few uh, three points of the huygens principle and you can see here this is a geometrical representation of the huygens wave theory this is the first one and this one is the second one clear i hope you understand it now here you can see come to this line the direction in which the disturbance is propagated is called the ray fine so in a homogeneous isotropic medium the ray always normal to the wavefront as shown by the arrows the huygens construction give a backward wavefront also shown by the dotted lines which is in contrary maximum in the forward direction to zero in the backward direction so huygens principles can be used to explain the phenomenon of refraction and reflection of light on the wave theory i hope you understand it now you can see here reflection of a plane wave at a plane surface this is the fourth topic and we have to study this so here you can see in the figure number 4 uh, sorry 3 ss dash be the section of the plane in refracting surface and ab that the plane wave front is striking at a you can see here from the figure number <coughs> this and what's going on let v be the velocity of the light and t seconds the time for the edges b of the wave front to reach the surface a dash so according to the huygens principle each point of the wave front ab which is acts as a new source of the secondary wavelets so in the presence of ss dash the wave front advances the point on ss dash you can see from this figure so successively struck by the wave front become the source of the secondary spherical wavelets thus after a time t when the wave front is striking the point a dash the secondary wavelets from a has acquired a radius which is equals to how much ab dash is equals to ba dash that is equals to vt clear you can see uh, please concentrate over this figure so whereas the secondary wavelets from a dash just starts let us draw a tangent a dash b dash from a dash to the secondary wavelets from a you can see here we draw a tangent and the normal at this points So, if a dash b dash be a tangent common to all the secondary wavelets starting from the different points between a and a dash, then the a dash b dash would represent the reflected wave, uh, wave front. You can see this is the reflected wave front. So, uh, see this figure. Uh, what we are drawing this figure from? Just consider the triangle A B A dash. So, using the Snell's law, sine i is equals to B A dash by A A dash. and for the refraction we can write sin r is equals to ab dash by aa dash so from if we combining or multiply just we uh, divide this is sin i by sin r so using the snell's law sin i by sin r if we multiply both divide the first one to the second one so finally you will get here how much vt by vt which is equals to 1 fine and this relation comes out from the equation number 1 so finally you will get here sin i is equals to sin r this is you also known as this is the laws of reflection the first laws of reflection that is the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection this is the second law of reflection fine now since ab and a dash b dash and ss dash are in the plane of paper so they will also be in the same plane therefore the incident ray the refracted ray and normal at the point of incidence are all on the same plane this is the first law of reflection you can see here from the figure the incident the reflected and the normal they all are line on the same plane this is the first law of reflection i hope you understand it now come to the uh, fifth one which is the refraction of a plane wave at a plane surface this is your snell's law clear you can see here this one figure number 2 uh, sorry this is figure number 4 fine so what's happening here we are supposing let be the section of a plane refracting surface separating media 1 and 2 you can see this figure 
a b that of a plane wave print is striking if at a let v1 and v2 be the velocities of the light in the two media where v1 velocity of the first media is greater than the velocity of the second medium so we can write here let t be the time for the edge b of the wave print to reach a dash so that you can write here b a dash is equals to how much v1 t clear now in the absence of s s dash if there is a not uh, if this medium or interface is not present then what happen the wave front which is ab would have advanced to the position a dash d and after a time t where a dash d is parallel to ab and ad is equals to how much ad is equals to ba dash which is equals to v1 t clear but in the presence of ss dash that is the interface the wave front advances the points between a and a dash successively is struck by the wave front become the source of the secondary spherical wavelets now the uh, thus after the time t the secondary wavelets from the medium 2 fine has acquired a radius ab dash is equals to how much v2 t whereas the secondary wavelets from a dash has just started so we can write uh, from this figure thus we are considering this figure from the help of this figure we can write ab dash is equals to how much v2 t and v2 in place of t we can write here b a dash by v1 So finally, you can write it v2 by v1 multiply by ad, or you can also write it in place of ad, v2 by v1 is equals to ab dash by ad dash. So here it comes out radius in the medium two upon the radius if the medium two were absent. This is your equation number one. Now what's going on here? Let us draw a tangent a dash b dash from a dash to the secondary wavelets from a. So if a dash b dash be a tangent common to the secondary wavelets, so started from the different points. between a and a dash then a dash b dash would represent the refracted wave front clear let m be the any point on ab so draw a uh, mpq parallel to b a dash and pm dash clear you can see just concentrate over this figure figure number 4 So B A dash and P M dash perpendicular to A dash B dash. So, so just we using the similarity of the triangles which you have studied in the mathematics. So P A dash by A dash is equals to P M dash by A B dash. And similar thing we have also apply in another triangle which is your P A dash Q and triangle A A dash D. So finally the relations comes out to be P A dash by A A dash is equals to P Q by A D. Clear? So from these two equations, this is equation number two, and this is your equation number three. What we get here? P M dash by A B dash is equals to P Q by A D, or you can write it P M dash by P Q equals to A B by A D. I hope you understand it. Now substituting the value for A dash A B dash by A D from the equation one, we get here P M dash by P Q, that is the radius in the medium two upon the radius in the medium two were absent. Now, since P Q is the radius of the wavelets from P if the medium two were absent, and P M dash must be the radius of the wavelets from P if the medium two. So, as P M is drawn perpendicular to A dash B dash, the wavelets from P must be A dash B dash. Since P is any point on A and A dash, so A dash B dash is the common tangent to the wavelets from the point between A and A dash. Now, since A dash B dash is the refracted wave front, so what we deduce from this law? Since the rays of the light are, are normal to the wave front A B C and A dash B dash C dash represents the incident and the refracted ray respectively, let us assume that A N and A N dash N dash be the normal to the S S dash and I N R the angle of the incidence and the refraction angles. So as the angle between the two straight line is equal to the angle between the normal, so we can write here. This is your incidence angle, and this is one is your the refraction angle. You can see from this. So again, we use the Snell's law, that is your sine i by sine r, and we put the values of this, and finally you will get here, that is sine i by sine r is equals to v1 by v2, that is your constant. So this is the Snell's law of refraction. I hope you understand it. Now it is clear that the incident ray, the refracted ray, and the normal at the point of the incidence are in the same plane. So Snell's law had simply shown on the basis of the experiment on refraction of light that sine i by sine r is equals to the constant term. clear now this constant is called the refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first medium and it is denoted by 1 and 2 how you can write it the refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first one so it is write it 1 and 2 where n is the refractive index so we can write it like sin i by sin r is equals to 1 and 2 huygens not only proved from his wave theory that sin i by sin r is a constant 1 and 2 but also proved that this constant 1 and 2 
is equal to the ratio of the speeds of light in the two media. So thus according to the wave theory, we can write the value 1 and 2 is equal to V1 by V2. Clear? So if the first medium is vacuum and the second medium is water, then the refractive index of the water is how much? N is equal to speed of light in vacuum or air and divided by the speed of light in water. So the speed of light in vacuum or air is represented by the letter C. Let the speed of the light in the, in the medium, water, v, small v, then you can write here refractive index is equal to C by V or you can write V equals to C by N. Clear? So N is greater than 1. So V is less than C. Means the velocity in the medium is less than the velocity of light. I hope you understand it. That is, the speed of light in water, that is the denser medium, is less than the speed of light in the rarer medium. This result obtained by the wave theory was found correct by the Foucault experiment. I hope you understand it, what I taught you. Now, the, here you can see, this is the optical path, and after that, okay, so let's complete this also. What is the optical path? So, if a light ray travel a distance capital D in a medium whose refractive index with respect to the air or vacuum is small n, then the product of the nd is called the optical path, which is traveled by the light ray. This is the important one. Now, suppose if we be the speed of the light ray in a medium of the refractive index n, then according to the th wave theory, we can write here v is equals to c by n. Fine. This is the thing we had already uh, proved in the web expressions where C is the speed of light or air or vacuum. So for traveling a distance capital D, in this medium, the time taken by the light ray is given by, you can use the formula, speed is equal to distance upon time. So uh, we can write it like this, T is equal to D by V, or in place of V, we can write C by N. So finally, the expression comes out to be N D by C. Clear? So in the same time, T, the distance traveled by the light ray in air or vacuum, you can write it, D is equals to C by T, or uh, in place of T, you put this value, which is N D C by C, and finally you will get N multiplied by D. So this is the optical path. Clear? So clearly, a light ray travels a distance, D, in a medium of refractive index is small n in the same time as it travels a distance, N D, in the air or vacuum. I hope you understand it. Now what is the effect of wavelength of light in going from one medium to another? This is the last one. So when a light passes from one medium to another, then its frequency does not change. This is the most important thing. You just uh, should keep remember it. But its speed and the hence its wavelength changes. What is the effect over the light when it goes from one medium to another medium? Its frequency changes, but its speed and wavelength remain unchanged. So if the speed of the light, water, be small v, and the wavelength be lambda w, then their relation is equal to v is equal to nu lambda w, where nu is the frequency and lambda w is the wavelength of water. So in vacuum or air, the speed of light is c, so the wavelength lambda can be write as c is equal to nu lambda. Fine. I hope you understand it. Now from the equation first and second, divided the second from the equation first. This is your second one, this is your first one. So c by v is equal to lambda by lambda w. So C by V is equal to nothing but, which is your refractive index of the water with respect to the air. So you can write it, N is equal to lambda by lambda W, or you can write the wavelength of the water is equal to lambda by N. This is the expression. Now since N is greater than, than 1, therefore the wavelength is decreases. So students, this is the end of the chapter. I hope what I taught you, you understand it very well. We will meet uh, in our next lecture with a new chapter. Till that, do study. Thank you class. Thank you very much.